we're starting to head into the colder months, I thought it was really important to talk about why mice need to be kept warm in winter and how we can do this. So let's talk about the why. Mice are very small animals and they have very fast metabolisms and because of this they can feel the cold and get cold very quickly. Larger mammals, things like elephants, humans, even rats have a smaller surface area to volume ratio and this helps them to prevent heat loss. Mice on the other hand, because they are so small, can have a bit of trouble with this. So generally anything below about 18 degrees Celsius they can start feeling effects obviously as we move into the winter months and it starts becoming single digits or even minus numbers, hopefully not in your house, but you never know, they can start really feeling the effects and have symptoms or even pass away because of this. So when a mouse experiences very cold temperatures or even sometimes just stress or illness, they can enter a state called torpor and you may be familiar with this in hamsters, it is a hibernation like state and from my experience they go very cold, very lethargic and very sleepy. When they enter this state, their metabolism starts to slow down, their heart rate and their blood pressure starts to drop, they may be very, very unresponsive, or you might also mistake them for already being dead. So this can be very dangerous for them, and if left alone, they can actually pass away and die because of this. So I've had two, maybe three mice go through this in my entire time of owning mice, and I do find that once you have a mouse that's gone into torpor, they tend to be a repeat offender and experience this a few times in their lifespan. So you do have to keep a close eye on them once they have experienced this. None of mine luckily have passed away because of this, but they have come quite close. Now, of course, if you find your mice in this situation and you are worried or they're not responding to any of the following treatments, please, of course, take them to a vet, whether it's a regular vet or an emergency out of hours vet. But of course, vets can be half an hour, an hour away. I do recommend trying a few things first, just to give them a fighting chance of surviving. And as well, if you're doing this in the middle of winter, you are gonna to have to take them outside, into the cold, into a cold car, then back outside again to the vet. So I recommend trying this as soon as you spot them in this state, just to give them a head start and a boost. And of course, if they don't respond to this or respond to your treatment, then of course, get them to a vet as soon as possible. But sometimes all you need to do is these next following steps and it does bring them back and it does make them recover. So you may avoid having to make a vet trip, but have that as a backup just in case. So the first thing you want to do if you find them in this state is to warm them up. And usually you'll find mine out in the open, just lying on the bedding, which is not normal for mice. And you know it's a bad sign when a mouse that usually doesn't like handling just lets you scoop them up. That starts alarm bells in my head. But the first thing you want to do is to warm them up. Not too quickly though and not too hot because this can cause them to go into shock. So you can do this by either just placing them inside of your shirt to get immediate body warmth or using things like hot water bottles or things like Ziploc bags with warm water inside or if you have a spare reptile heat mat like I do just lying around obviously on a thermostat but plug this in and that's an immediate quick heat source so things like that whatever you've got to warm them even if it's just your own body heat try to do that as soon as possible. You can also get, I think they're called snuggle safes, I'll put a picture on screen, but these are good to have in the case of emergencies. They're like a rodent friendly hot water bottle, and whatever you've got, use it just to try to raise their body temperature. The next step is making sure your mice are hydrated. Sometimes mice can go into torpor if they've done something really stupid, like putting their bedding into their water bowl in the middle of the night, and then being thirsty and going into torpor, so making sure they're hydrated is the next step. And that's why I always recommend keeping really, really tiny syringes on hand. If you don't have any of these, you can go to your local vets, or you can also probably just order these online, but keeping really tiny syringes is really handy, and I always recommend it. So to help them rehydrate, you want to take a cup and put into this one tablespoon of salt and one tablespoon of sugar. Mix this with warm water, not cold water, warm water, and then drip feed this against the side of their mouth to try to encourage them to lick this. With this, don't try to force this into their mouth or force this down their throat because if you do this incorrectly, it can cause them to aspirate and that can also cause them to die. So please make sure you're not forcing this into them. Most mice, if you just place this at the side of their mouth and underneath their lip and start dripping this in slowly, will start to lick this and drink this. So just be gentle with this. Don't try to like force a bunch of liquid down their throat because that can cause its own issues. 
but most mice, if you catch them early enough with a combination of a heat source and also with rehydration, should start to gradually start moving and eating again. So please make sure at this stage, you're also offering them some sort of food source too, as that's a good indicator as to how they're feeling. I do recommend after they're past the worst of it, keeping them in a carrier and giving them plenty of bedding to regain their heat and keeping them near a heat source and also making sure they have plenty of food and water, possibly wet foods, things like baby foods or liquid foods that you mix with a powder and warm water, things like that, make sure they have plenty of that on hand and give them maybe a calm friend in the carrier before they get better and rejoin the group. I tend to find with most mice they just need overnight to recover, the next morning you check on them and they're running around as if nothing happened. But that is torpor, that is my main concern when it comes to mice and colder temperatures and it is just something to be aware of and look out for with your mice. So let's move on to things you can do to keep your mice warm and stop them getting too cold. The first one is quite an obvious one, try to make sure the room they're in is not too drafty and you're not leaving a window wide open in the winter. I tend to find with mice, obviously some people will advise against tanks because it can be a con because they lack ventilation but tanks generally I do find keep the mice warmer because you're not getting too much drafty ventilation and that can be one of the pros of keeping your mice in an enclosure like the one that I use. Of course you also want to make sure you're giving them plenty of nesting material as this will help them to stay warm. Whatever you use, whether it's hay or paper based bedding, stick a bit of extra of this in, in the winter time and also into extra hides, just to give them a bit of added warmth. Also when it comes to the type of hides you're using in the enclosure, I like to use things like multi-chamber hides or things that are buried underneath the bedding, just to give them that added bit of insulation of the outside bedding where they're buried under the ground, that should also help. There's little things as well that I do that I don't know if they make the biggest difference but I like to do them anyway. Things like when I'm filling up their water bowls and water bottles, I won't just blast freezing cold water in them. In the winter months I will try to give them like room temperature lukewarm water in their water bowls just so they're not getting too cold when they're drinking that too. Also if you are worried you can also use a heat mat like used with reptiles. Just be very very careful with this, I would be careful using this with a plastic based cage or even some wooden vivariums because they can be a fire hazard if you're not using them correctly. Also always make sure to always use this with a thermostat, never just use the heat mat because they can get very very hot so this is also an option especially if you have a glass tank like this one. I would just attach this to the front of the glass and give them a warm side and a cooler side and that can also be good in colder months just in case you have a really really cold house and generally it's not the warmest house in the world. This can give your mice their own warmer spot that can be really helpful. Just generally make sure your house is not getting too cold for your mice. If you have one particular room that tends to be warmer, by all means move your mouse enclosure into that room. This room tends to be the hottest one in the house because it's got various different heat mats and heat lamps for the other pets, but it doesn't get too cold in here luckily. It can be hard sometimes finding a balance because as soon as you turn on the central heating or radiators, that can make the air in the room quite dry and that can of course make your rats or mice start sneezing so just be aware if they do start doing that around the time you turn the heating on that is probably why. But that is pretty much all of the tips that I could think of when it comes to keeping your mice warmer in the winter months. I also just wanted to talk about torpor again because it's been a few years since I have and I was not aware of it when I first started owning mice and I think it's a really important thing to be aware of and know how to deal with it when it happens. So I hope this has been helpful. Hope you guys enjoyed watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.